Hey guys, welcome to video three. Um, today we are talking about the second superstructure, which is your muscles. Um, so we've already talked about your bones and skeleton. Um, just keep in mind, endoskeleton is um, the type of skeleton that anything with a vertebrae would have. And then exoskeleton is the type of skeleton that anything with um, without a backbone would have. Um, so muscle superstructure is next. And there's um, three main muscles that we're going to talk about. So the first is cardiac muscle which is literally just your heart, okay? It's just a, a fancy term to represent your heart. And your heart is actually going to be an involuntary muscle, which means that you don't actually have to think for it to move. Um, the movement happens completely on its own, um, which is a good thing, because if we had to think about, you know, how many times our heart needs to beat, in a minute, then we probably wouldn't get anything else done. Um, so our heart is going to be moving all on its own. We don't have to think about it. Um, so the heart um, or the heart's movement is controlled by our brain um, and the sin sinoatrial node, which is a group of cells. Um, so together, these two things work together in order to allow our heart to beat um, which is a good thing. And this is also called um, your heart, in other words. Your heart is also called a pacemaker, um, which is the just another term essentially for the sinoatrial node um, because it controls the pace of your heart um, and how it beats. And some people actually have to get surgery in order to get a um, man-made pacemaker put into their heart because their actual sinoatrial sino node does not work. Um, so they have to undergo surgery to get a pacemaker. Um, so kind of cool that it actually, that pacemaker is actually a, a word that is naturally made in our body, which is the sinoatrial node. And then the second type of muscle is smooth muscle. So smooth muscle, these are also involuntary muscles, which means we don't have to think about moving them. They move completely on their own when it's needed. So an example of smooth muscles would be your abdomen. Um, so you would be amazed at how often your abdomen actually moves without you really even noticing. Um, but it's essentially what keeps you upright. Um, so it is doing its job without you having to think about it. Your internal organs, um, so you can think of your stomach lining, your um, intestines, your rectum, your esophagus. Um, any type of internal organ would be considered a muscle that does its job completely on its own without you thinking about it, which is a good thing. These things have to expand and contract in order to work, but we don't have to think about doing the movement. Because like I said, we probably wouldn't get anything done if we had to think about how our body works. The last type of muscle is skeletal muscle. So skeletal muscle, these are voluntary muscles, which means we control the movements. We have to think about it in order to get them to move. Um, so the movement happens by you thinking about it. So skeletal muscles also end in a tendon, which is what attaches the muscle to the skeleton. Okay, so when you flex your arm or um, when you flex your legs, you are flexing skeletal muscles and the tendon is what helps you flex them. Okay, because you have to think about flexing it. So whenever you are flexing your arm, it's hard to show you on video, but you have to essentially move your arm in order to flex it. So that movement is coming from the tendon. Some examples of skeletal muscles would be arm muscles, so your biceps, triceps, or triceps, 
Um, your leg muscles is another example. So your hamstrings, your rectus femoris, which is your thigh muscle, um, and of course your calves um, and any other little muscles that I'm forgetting in your leg. Okay, so with that being said, we are going to flip over to page seven. And this picture right here, um, you can see that the muscles are a little bit more difficult to pronounce than the skeleton. Um, so right here, this muscle that allows your eyes to open and close would be your orbit, excuse me, sorry, I got tongue tied, orbicularis oculi. And then also right here that allows your forehead to go up and down and for you to, you know, squint your eyes and all that stuff um, would be your frontalis. And then your mouth area that allows your lips to move would be your orbicularis oris. So a good way to remember the difference between the oculi and the oris. Oculi, if you think about, um, think about, um, Um, sorry about that, y'all. Um, thought I heard one of my boys yelling. The oculi, think about like an ocular lens. Um, so the ocular lens, you would use it sort of like a um, telescope or a microscope. Um, so you would look through it, okay, using your eyes, of course, to see something closer. Um, so oculi or ocular is dealing with your eyesight. Okay, the next area that I want to point out is this area, um, sort of like your throat muscles. Um, so that it would be the sternocleidoid mastoid. And then your pecs, okay, would be your pectoralis major. And then your shoulder muscles right here is your deltoids. And then this big muscle right here in your arm is the biceps brachii, and then on the back side of that muscle, okay, we call it the horseshoe muscle because if you were to flex it, then it kind of looks like a horseshoe in this area. So that is your triceps brachii, and then your um, next arm muscle right here that is attached to your radius is the brachioradialis, and then um, so that's it for your arm. And then your abdomen area, sort of like your side abdomen, is your external obliques. Okay, and then your leg area. Now, of course, you see there are tons of little muscles that we're not even talking about um, because there are over 600 skeletal muscles in your body. So we would be here all week talking about all 600 of them. Um, so we're just kind of picking out the main ones. So this one right here is the one that's going to be attached to your femur. So rectus femoris. And then this one right here um, is your sartorius. Um, so this kind of allows you to, um, well, think of it this way. Um, ladies and moms, of course. This is where we have an issue when we get older. I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about, but um, you usually can get some extra fat and skin in this area. Um, but if you work this muscle, the sartorius, then that allows you to kind of um, help get rid of that fat. Okay, and then the um, shin area or the calves, um, this one will be attached to your tibia. So that's the tibialis anterior. And then on the back side of your calf area is the gastronemesis or nemeus. Even I'm having a hard time pronouncing these. Um, and then up here, the back of your legs, that's your hamstrings. And then of course your large um, buttock, buttocks muscle is your gluteus maximus. And then this smaller muscle right here that kind of attaches to your um, lower back is your gluteus medius. And right here, the back 
Um, the upper back that attaches to your neck is your trapezius. And then you have a small muscle back here at the back of your head called the occipitalis. And I believe that's all of them. I don't think I skipped any. Um, so look over this chart, study it for several days, and then try to um, attempt filling this page out by yourself um, just to see how you do. Okay.